Happy Sunday to everybody. Welcome to Virtual Church with New Community Church of Nuevo. I'm Pastor Greg Vanderhorn, and we're doing this live from my living room as we normally have done this year. Um, I welcome you all, though, to worship time. It is a time of, of greatness where we can gather together uh, in God's name, one or two at a time from our different homes and uh, have church together. So I wanted to open this with a God's greeting. Come here, little man. I know. Sorry about that. You're late. When Moses gathered the people of Israel into the group, God said to them, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the house of Egypt, out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And as we gather today, let's worship God together who continues to be the God that brings us out of our bondage, who brings us out of our places of slavery in our lives. And we worship him today together with our prayers and our attention to him as we hear the message that he does and has for us today. I want to open with a word of prayer, and I want to encourage everybody to send in in the comment section your prayers. And after uh, the message today, we will do a little, uh, we'll get together for a word of prayer. We'll gather around and we'll pray for your prayer requests. And then today is also the first Sunday of Advent. So if you'll see here, we got the Advent candle set up from church. So I will have some readings every, every week through the season of Advent. And we can kick off our Advent season and the season of thanks that we had that we celebrated this week and the season of giving that we'll celebrate all the way up until Christmas. So will you join me with a word of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you have gathered us together. And even though we're not in a church and even though we are not in a sanctuary or, or together, we can still have church together and we can still have church with you. Please bless today. Please bless the worship service. Please bless those I ask for those who are listening and, and watching maybe for the first time and are looking for Jesus, that maybe we can bring Jesus to us. So I ask again for a special blessing and thank you for this time we get together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to do our Advent reading for today. Lighting a candle is a simple yet profound act. It is a testimony to the power of light over darkness. Even the light of one candle can reveal our faces as we stand near it. As we light the candle, we begin the journey to Christmas, the day of joy and celebration. The first candle on the Advent wreath is called the Hope Candle. It opens up the period that anticipates Christmas and remembers those who first spoke the promise of the coming Christ child. And Jesus' coming birth brought us hope. <clears throat> from Isaiah 2 verses 2 through 5 in the last days the mountains of the Lord the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established in the highest mountains it will be exalted above all the hills and all the nations will stream to it many peoples will come and say come let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the temple of God of Jacob he will teach us his ways and he, so that we may walk in his paths the law will go out from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up against sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Will you join me in an Advent prayer? God of light, place in our hearts so that we may walk as children of the light. Place a candle in our hearts so that we may walk as children of the light. Treading gently on the paths of peace and ever ready to welcome the new signs of life that bring us hope. Amen.
Also, before we go into our scripture reading and the message for today, I was asked to mention that if you are wishing to send in your tithes and gifts, and we're not able to do it because we have um, closed the church for now for social distancing, you can send those gifts to our church address at 409 Monday in the Wago, Michigan, 49337. And we will get those, uh, check the mailbox every day, and we'll make sure that we get those tithes uh, brought to the church. So um, that's just something to be mindful of and, and, and just to remember so that that's an opportunity for you to give your tithes still while we're separated for now. My scripture passage comes from the last verses of Deuteronomy 5. We're going to read verse 21 and then skip all the way to verses 32 and 33. This is the, the last couple of verses. This is our final um, sermon on the series of the Ten Commandments. So uh, we'll be finishing up with this. So you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not set your desire on your neighbor's house or land, his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. And then skipping to the end, Moses says this at the end. So be careful to do what the Lord your God has commanded you. Of course, he's talking about all the Ten Commandments he's just listed. Do not turn aside to the right or to the left. Walk in obedience to all that your Lord, your God, has commanded you, so that you may live and prosper and prolong in your days in the land that you will soon possess. This is the reading of God's word for today. The word covet is not a lot, not doesn't get a lot of use in today's word today. Um, you know, I looked up the word covet and the Hebrew meaning for covet, actually the Hebrew word is tamod. And it means literally to desire something. And if you look it up in the gospel according to Webster's Dictionary, you can see that desire can mean everything from having an interest in all the way to longing or craving for something. Desire in and of itself can be a good thing. As Christians, we desire to live a life worthy of being children of God. Amen? Amen. And we should desire to serve God's church in a constructive and positive way. We should live in a way, we should desire in a way that we live, that, that we glorify God in everything we do and say. And desire for our spouse, if we're married, makes for a healthy marriage, but that's a different sermon. However, we live in a world, though, that sometimes... Our desire gets out of hand. We, we live in a world that has immediate gratification tied to it with these tangible and intangible things that we see. Our desire for things goes a little crazy. And like I said, we, we don't do it so much constructively anymore. The Rolling Stones song, Satisfaction, can be the anthem for this I want this and that now culture that we live in. We at times get caught up in seeing what others have and want, and, and we need it for ourselves. We long for it for ourselves. I call it human's being. When I looked at the scripture passage for today, I switched the word covet for desire. And it made it more specific, almost of a more urgent command for me at least. You shall not desire your neighbor's wife. You shall not set your desire on your neighbor's house or land, his male or female servant, his ox or donkey. You should not desire anything that belongs to your neighbor. When we set a desire, an unhealthy desire, on things that we don't have, we lose the respect for the providential gifts that God has given us. When we desire things that aren't our personal gifts from God, we, we lose sight of the fact that God is the only provider that we need in our lives. Coveting or desiring something takes away the attitude of gratitude that we have. Gratitude for things that the Lord has given us because that 
the fact that our great and heavenly Father knows what we truly need. Coveting is also dangerous desiring when it's unconstructive or, or unbridled desire, maybe if you want to use that term, also invites idolatry into our lives. When we desire something other than that which that comes from our heavenly Father, that's also breaking the second commandment, in, in my opinion. And then we risk letting the devil in who will use anything available at his disposal to steal us from God, kill our faith, and divide up the true body of believers. Sometimes we risk our lives when we want to keep up with the Joneses. All the commandments that we have gone through and that we can read here in Deuteronomy 5 or Exodus 20 are all words and laws and requirements that the Lord dictated to Moses for the people of Israel and us now. They all have this function of directing the believer back to God. And more specifically, back to God's sovereignty in their lives. Whether that be the Israelite waiting to enter into promised land or the Gentiles here living in the Nuevo County area. The Ten Commandments sum up what our lives and our service to God should look like. It's all about focus, my friends. Focus on God only. Focus on worshiping God in his only name. His holy name. Focus on the salvation that we have from the bondage in our lives that Jesus breaks us free from. Focus on authority that God has ordained in our lives. Focus on sustaining and supporting and respecting life. Focus on true and proper love. Focus on respecting the things that our neighbors have. And also focusing on honoring our neighbor. And finally, and as Jesus taught, focus on loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. Family of God, today we started the season of Advent. And the season of Advent is about remembering how the world waited for the arrival of the newborn king, Jesus Christ. And it would seem that a Ten Commandments sermon isn't really a Christmas or an Advent season sermon. But the Lord gave the Ten Commandments to the people of Israel to lead them into the land of Canaan and give them this promised land. He wanted them to be leaders in this new land. It was a time and a place that they had waited for with hope. And, and finally, God was about to do it. But he said, you're going to be special. Here's the laws and requirements I'm going to give you that are going to make it special. And the Advent season focuses our minds and our hearts on the arrival of Jesus Christ that we wait for. Jesus Christ who was sent to deliver us from the bondage of sin into our eternal promised land. And with the love of Jesus Christ and the law of God in our hearts, we too can be leaders in our land. The Ten Commandments are necessary during these times of uncertainty and indecision. And I'm not saying the Advent season is a time of uncertainty and indecision, but, you know, Webster's most used word this year they put out was COVID-19, and then they put out pandemic, and they put out coronavirus, and they put up cancel culture. All these things that make up what the year 2020 has been like for a lot of us. The Ten of Commandments may look like a list of rules to some, but they're given and meant to protect us from what would want to kill us. They're not just fun killer laws, they're, they're evil killer laws if we follow them and we abide them. I added verses 32 and 33 to the text for today because they're a promise within a requirement that Moses gave to the generations to come who would read these laws and, and, and who would understand them for their own. He says, so be careful to do what the Lord has commanded you. Do not turn aside from the light right or to the left, but walk in obedience to all that the Lord your God has commanded you to do. 
And here's that promise, so that you may live and prosper and prolong in the days in the land that you will possess. You know, we can consider these Ten Commandments a light in the darkness for us to follow. We can consider these commandments as, as guidance into the new promised land, if you will, that, that eternal life with Jesus Christ. And the Advent season focuses on following this light that Jesus Christ will bring that we can follow throughout our lives. Isaiah 9 verse 2 says, The people walking in the darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Remember, the light is in us because God's law and God's love is in us. And we can take that and we can walk out and even in dark and uncertain times when we're waiting with Advent type anticipation for the, for the stuff, the bad stuff to end and, and things to go back to normal, that we can know that we have God's laws and, and his love that we can follow and, and create a structure in our lives. Thanks be to God for his laws and his love and especially his son who came to save this world and bring us into a new life. Amen. We'll now go to a time of prayer. I know Rhonda has been writing some prayer requests down. And if you've sent your prayer requests in or, or maybe if you send them in a little bit later because there's a delay, um, keep sending them in. That way we can pray for them afterwards. Thank you. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the laws that give us a life of protection, the laws that give us something to to cling to in a lawless time so that we may have those in our lives so that we can follow Jesus in a more perfect way in an imperfect world. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for the answering of prayers, the, the, the fact that we can lean on you during your prayer time where we can sit with you and talk about the things in our lives that, that may be troubling us or the things in our lives that maybe giving us this immense amount of joy and praise. So we ask for, for Harmony Green, who is coming home today from the hospital, and, and we pray for continued praying for the pneumonia. Dear Lord, we pray for the Zerlot family and, and the passing of Eric's grandpa, Weingand, who meant so much to them and, and will be missed. And so we ask for that time of healing and peace for them. For Dave Hooksimo, who is still healing, and while he's taking a break from his cancer treatment, but he's also celebrating a new grandbaby in Georgia, and we thank your name for new life and, and new grandchildren and, and a time to praise your name for that. We continue to pray, dear Heavenly Father, and lift up our brother Richard Hamster, who is continuing his healing during his cancer treatment, and, and for his wife Sue, who is going through this right alongside him. We pray for the Leibold family, the Browns and the Greens and the Chipmans for continued healing after the passing of Brenda's dad. Our loved ones leave a huge hole in our hearts. And even though we may know that, that they're with you now in heaven and they're in eternity, it's, it's still hard to move on from day to day. So we ask for a peace and a healing. Dear Lord, we praise your name for all the frontline health care workers who are going into the hospitals and the clinics and the doctor's offices every day. And we ask for continued prayers and power and support in Jesus' name for those folks who are still working every day in these doctor's offices. We pray for Gloria Whitmore, who is still continuing to heal from her brain aneurysm that they found, and, and they're working on getting it down. And for Kathy Paul, for her continued healing after her shoulder surgery. Dear Lord, we lift up Phyllis, who is getting settled into her new apartment in Grand Rapids. And, and we will miss her and we will have a 
have a place for her in our church all the time, and we hope that she'll be able to still follow us on Facebook and watch us from, from her home there. And we just pray for a new time and a good time or a, and a healthy time for her in a new place with her kids. Dear Lord, we pray for the governing bodies of this country. We pray for the president and the vice president all the way from the top down to the local leaders, dear Heavenly Father. We, we pray for those people who are healing from COVID and the government who have to still go in and lead our country, dear Heavenly Father. We pray for a strengthening of the economy and we pray for a blessing on this cure or this vaccine, I should say, that is coming out and that it does the job it's supposed to so that we can heal from this COVID and we can move on. And we just ask for this guidance that these leading political bodies follow your wisdom and your will as they lead the country and lead the cities and the towns in this COVID fight. And dear Lord, we pray for Sue Sotelo, who is healing from her surgery last week. We praise your name that it went well and it wasn't as invasive as they thought it was going to be. But we praise you so much that you were there with the doctors and the nurses and the staff doing the, doing the procedure and that everything turned out great because you were leading them. Dear Lord, we just know that everything will turn out great because you're leading us. And we ask that you continue to move in our hearts with the power of the Holy Spirit that we will continue to follow you and everything will turn out great, turn out perfect, because we know that you are our Heavenly Father. Thank you, Abba Father, for granting us adoption into your family so that we may have these conversations with you, we may have these prayer times with you and, and this time of conversation. Bless us from this day as we go out, as we do our things, as we go out into the week. Bless us with our time so that we may use those times to spread the word of the gospel to people that you put in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to say thank you for everybody who prayed for me as I was waiting for my COVID test. If you didn't hear, I was a little... Wondering, so I went and got a test, and it came back all negative on Thursday. So that's um, that's an answer to prayer. So I just want to thank you for that as well. My friends, in the book of Matthew, someone asked Jesus, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with your soul and with all your mind. He said, this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So remember this, family of God, as you go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Shalom. All right. Okay.